space seems to be even more on our brains than usual lately. Whether you are checking out recent and amazing footage from NASA's massive moon rocket or following along in the billionaire space race, the universe seems to be trending in our thoughts a little more than usual. It's then impossible to think about traveling to space without thinking about rockets, and even the most novice of space connoisseurs know that it's impossible to launch a rocket without a launch pad. It keeps the entire vessel stable during ignition so that the engines can build up to maximum thrust for a smooth and safe takeoff. And of course, building a launch pad has never been easy. A launch pad requires millions of dollars, extensive hours, or years, of time and energy, and a huge team to bring it into existence. SpaceX actively works on the Starship, a new generation spacecraft that intends to send people to the moon and then to Mars for the past few years. But before it can actually send people to the moon and Mars, it has to first conquer Earth's orbit. And one of its biggest obstacles is the launch pad itself. What's more, SpaceX's launch pad seems to always have problems with the Starship's static fire tests. First off, let's take a peek at the roaring explosion that ripped through SpaceX's rocket testing facilities in Boca Chica, Texas back in July. The incident began around 4.20 p.m. CDT on the 11th when Super Heavy Booster 7, or its launch mount, unintentionally ignited a cloud of flammable gas produced during a flow test involving most or all of its 33 Raptor engines. When the resulting cloud of well-mixed methane and oxygen gas was accidentally ignited, it functioned like a small fuel air bomb, rapidly combusting to produce a violent explosion and shockwave. After the initial explosion, the fire also expanded to burn as much of the resulting gas as possible, producing a fireball that briefly reached 80 to 90 meters in height. Booster 7 experienced some sort of damage during the explosion, then it had to replace dozens of Raptor engines. Additionally, the incident also damaged the launch tower, which is equipped with a pair of mechanical arms known as chopsticks, which lift and hold the booster in place. We also spotted some unknown objects dropped from within the explosion. Worse yet, a six-engine static fire test of Ship 24 scattered superheated debris hundreds of meters away from the launch pad, igniting a major brush fire. Outfitted with the upgraded Raptor 2 engines, Starship S24 could have produced up to 1,380 tons of thrust when it ignited all six for the first time at 4.30 p.m. CDT on the 8th of September. On top of smashing the record for most thrust produced during a Starbase rocket test, Ship 24's engines burned for almost 8 seconds, making it one of the longest static fires ever performed on a Starship test stand. However, several brush fires were visible almost immediately after clouds of dust and steam were cleared. Most likely, eight long seconds of blast furnace conditions melted the top layer of surrounding concrete and shot a hailstorm of tiny superheated globules in almost every direction. Indeed, in almost every direction, there was something readily able to burn, and a fire started. In several locations to the south and west, brush caught fire and began to burn unusually aggressively, quickly growing into walls of flames that sped across the terrain. To the east, debris even made it into a SpaceX dumpster, the contents of which easily caught fire and burned for hours. Luckily, because of the saltwater marsh-like terrain around the pads, it's rather easy to stop fires at choke points, and the main concern was holding firefighters out of the area until the vehicle was made safe. However, we can say with absolute certainty it wasn't the first time that such a fire has been caused by a test there, and it most likely won't be the last. More recently, Booster 7 has successfully fired up 14 of its 33 Raptor engines, likely becoming the most powerful active rocket in the world. When igniting 14 of its engines at once, B7 could have produced up to 3,220 tons of thrust, but notably that's only 14 out of 33 engines, and yet we got a dust cloud engulfing the entire launch tower. In reality, that's not dust, that's pulverized concrete, or concrete fire spalling, and that's a big problem. Musk provided additional context after the 14 engine static fire, noting the next test will be a 20 second firing, followed by possibly one more static fire. According to some sources, that one more static fire 
will fire all 33 Raptor 2 engines on B7. When 33 powerful Raptor engines are involved, even nominal pre-burner testing will likely produce a massive fireball that could engulf Super Heavy's aft, if not the entire booster with flames. For static fire testing, Raptors typically produce a smaller and briefer but still substantial fireball during the shutdown, creating another potential source of damage to any sensitive hardware located anywhere on or in Booster 7's thrust section. As such, Super Heavy's aero covers may be just as important for surviving static fires as they'll be for surviving launches and landings. This is a problem that SpaceX is hoping to solve with its Boca Chica facility. It's worth noting that there are some special points in the Starbase launch pad. Instead, SpaceX is building a separate steel mount and water-cooled thruster diverter designed to stand up to the fury of a Super Heavy booster without allowing the rocket's plume to dig a crater in the ground after every ignition. While choosing to pursue a dramatically different launchpad design for Starship may at first glance seem risky, SpaceX actually has more than a decade of experience building and operating similar mount and flame diverter setups at its McGregor, Texas rocket development and test facilities. A step further, NASA itself once heavily relied on similar technologies and strategies to rapidly build, test, and fly rockets larger than anything that came before them. However, we can't forget that static fires with 33 Raptor 2 engines will be able to generate a total of around 7,600 metric tons of thrust, more than twice the power of the Saturn V rocket. This impressive number really worried us about the Starship launch pad endurance. Can the launch pad survive such a test? Only time will tell. But with a little bit of luck, according to SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk, an intense effort is underway to ensure that Super Heavy B-7's Raptor engines are well contained during anomalies, so that one engine violently failing won't damage or destroy the booster, other engines, or even the launch pad. The company itself is also proceeding very carefully with Starship testing. Hopefully, with these preparations, no unfortunate incident will happen. Anyway, the launch pad is really an important part of the whole system. As Musk said, for the first orbital launch, our goal is to get into orbit without exploding. But to be totally frank, if it takes off without blowing off the stand, stage zero, which is much harder to replace than the booster, that will be a victory. So, please do not blow up on the stand. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.